Hello everybody. In a previous video, we walked through how you could take a little dip into the cryptocurrency world and hit the Gemini exchange to pull all sorts of interesting pricing data into Tableau. And um, one of the aspects of that video was to create a hyper extract that had all of the various um, cryptocurrencies listed on the Gemini exchange as data existing within that hyper extract. So I figured that uh, this would be a good opportunity to demonstrate to you how you can programmatically publish this data to Tableau server or Tableau online. So this is going to take us back into REST API territory. So we're going to see how you can uh, use the REST API to just publish an existing data source, whether that's a .tds file or .tdsx, or in this case, hyper, and how you can publish that directly to your Tableau server environment. So right now, this is a local data source. If you're super Tableau savvy, you might recognize that this is a live connection. And by the end of this video, we'll see that we'll publish this up to, the, to, to my Tableau online site, and then we will access it, uh, this exact same data, via that connection. So we'll get a little bit of a different icon up there. So let's go ahead and dive in. So the end game here is to publish that data up to this site and specifically into this default folder uh, or default project. And so part of what I'm going to show you here as well is uh, if there is a specific project that you would like to publish this data to, publish this data source to, then uh, you can actually choose which one that file is going to land in. And actually you need to choose one of these. So, before we hop into the code, let's just take a quick look at the actual REST API reference documentation that uh, tells you all the information you would need to know about publishing a data source. There's a lot of information out here, and uh, if you wanted to, you could build this all from scratch. But in this case, we're going to be using the Tableau API lib library to publish this uh, and make use of this endpoint. And so we'll just scroll through this a little bit and you can see down here, these are the different file types that you could publish. So in this case, we are using a hyper file and let's see how we bring this to life. So for starters, we are going to import Tableau server connection from Tableau API lib. We're also going to import this querying section of the library so that we can easily um, get a picture of which projects that we have and identify the project ID for the project that we want to publish to. And uh, this, if, if this is new to you, as well as the configuration for the server that we're publishing to, then go ahead and check out the getting started tutorial. It is linked in the description of this video. But we're just going to go ahead and run through this. Uh, check out those videos or that getting started video if you want to know more about that process. Now, once we do have the Tableau API lib uh, imported and specifically the Tableau server connection, we can establish a connection to the environment that we defined right up here by running this con equals Tableau server connection of that configuration information, and then we can sign in which basically establishes that connection to that server. So now we're signed in, we have the credentials that we need um, to, to publish um, content up to that server. So before we can publish our data source, that hyper file that we generated in the other video, which I will also link in the description, uh, where, where we took all the data from the Gemini exchange and packed that into a hyper file, before we publish that hyper file up to our Tableau online site, we are going to want to know what project are we publishing this to. So using this, uh, this querying section of the Tableau API lib library, there is this get projects data frame function where we pass the connection that we've established with Tableau server into that function. And this is going to then 
pull for us all of the various projects that we have and some nice information about those projects. Um, in this case, we're just going to publish to the default project, and so we're going to store this ID, this project ID, for the default project uh, into this variable down here, default project ID, and then we're going to reference this when we publish that hyperfile up to the Tableau online site. So here I'm just storing whatever the response is from the server into this variable named response and we're making use of the publish data source method in the Tableau API lib library and if we went back out to the Tableau server rest API reference we would see that this name right here publish data source corresponds to an endpoint uh, named publish data source. So inside of this, we can see that there are various parameters that we can pass, or various arguments that we can pass into this uh, method. And some of these we're not going to be making use of here, because in this case we have a hyperfile that lives locally on our computer, so we don't need to worry about things like connection username and password and embedding credentials. That would be something that you would need to um, apply to this publish data source method if you were publishing something like let's say a uh, some data coming from a Postgres database or Snowflake or Redshift then you would need to probably specify some credentials because uh, you have a username and a password that gets you access to the data that lives on that database which lives on some server. In this case, everything's just local here. We're going to be publishing up this uh, file named Crypto Prices, and it's a hyperfile. So we pass in the data source file path, and in this case, that file path is here in my working directory. Uh, otherwise, if it was somewhere else, you would just need to specify the path to that file. And the data source name, this is just how this thing is going to live on Tableau server or Tableau online. So I'm just going to name it uh, the same way that this file is actually named, just so it's easier for me to keep track of what exists in Tableau Online versus um, how was that data named in my local environment. That's just a personal preference. Uh, then we do need the project ID, which we got up here. And then I'm going to add this optional project, uh, or sorry, this optional data source description. In this case, this is just telling me that this, uh, these crypto prices are actually relevant to the Gemini Exchange crypto prices. Alright, so let's go ahead and run this. Uh, I am going to make sure that I ran the default project ID first. And then we get this response 201, which if we look out at the documentation here, if we scrolled through this, we would be able to see that a valid response code is going to be a 201 response. Um, let's see, response code 201. So if we got anything other than a 201 response code for this endpoint, then that would mean that we were not successful, but this is telling us we were successful, and we can verify that again down here by looking at the JSON body of the response. And this is going to tell us, um, this would be really useful if you're doing some kind of automated publishing of data sources up to your server or up to your uh, Tableau online site. This would give you back the, uh, the ID value for the content that you just published. So perhaps you want to go back and update that data source or maybe even delete it at some point. Um, this would be giving you the ID value such that you could identify that specific piece of content on your server. All right, so then let's take a look out in our Tableau Online environment and make sure that this was actually published. So we were publishing this to the default site, and sure enough, I see crypto prices here. Um, and now let's hop back into the Tableau desktop environment, and instead of connecting to this local file, I could connect to a new data source. I could point to Tableau server, which in my case I'm connecting to a Tableau online site, but it's all the same here. I click on Tableau server and that's going to allow me to um, sign into the Tableau online site if I wanted to or if I needed to. In this case I'm already signed in, 
So then I can just simply choose which of the data sources that are published up to this site do I want to connect to. I'm going to click on that crypto prices, which we see is published to the default project. And I'm going to connect to this. And then we could see once this loads that I'm going to be able to create the exact same visual that we have. So out here on sheet one, which is using this crypto prices extract, I could go out into a new sheet and I could say, let's bring um, time up to my x-axis and give me this data at the daily level. I'm just going to exclude this outlier and then show my closing price. So now we're seeing all of the closing prices per day, but in that other visual, we were filtering by symbol. And so we can make this uh, a single symbol at a time that we could look at. So we could see, all right, this particular cryptocurrency, how is this doing? Then we could switch over to Ethereum against the US dollar. We could see how this is doing. And if we hop back into my original visual here, I think we are actually looking at Ethereum. So we can just verify that these are the same visuals. So now that's the same data, and this would be a great way to uh, give the rest of your team access to data. So instead of having to share around some kind of flat file, we could just publish this up to Tableau Server or Tableau Online. And um, rather than just publishing a single file, uh, like in this workflow, you could, you could just go to a uh, server and then publish a data source. But if you're working in an automated environment or in a situation where you might be collecting this data every day or every hour and you want to publish that data and make it available on Tableau Server, then this REST API approach is going to be uh, much more valuable to you. Uh, it's going to save you a lot of time. You're not going to have to manually publish these assets up to Tableau Server so that they're available for everyone else. You could just script this process uh, of retrieving the data and then publishing the data and you would know that it's always getting done for you and you don't have to spend time doing it. So hopefully this is helpful to you and in this case we were just publishing a simple file. Uh, in the future we'll explore more of these REST API endpoints in more depth. So thanks for tuning in for this and see you next time.